I did what you said. I did what you said. I bought a rental property. I bought a rental property. And I came back home and I said to Kim, time to sell. I agree 100% with Richard. We're being set up right now because this next crash is going to be even bigger. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, inflation makes the rich extremely rich. The middle class will pay higher taxes and the poor will get poor. What's the, what is the consequence of all this? Where is this leading us? Well, so in 2008, when this bubble did blow up, I expected I, that it would blow up. It did blow up. But I expected when it blew up that there would be a depression. But what we saw instead was the U.S. government borrowed trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and pumped it into the economy. And the Fed created $3.6 trillion during the first three rounds of quantitative easing and bought those government bonds, financing that government debt. If the Fed had not bought those bonds, if the Fed hadn't created all that money, the government couldn't have borrowed so much money without pushing interest rates to an extremely high level. All of that government borrowing would have pushed interest rates up and the very high interest rates would have crushed the economy and done even more harm than the government spending did good supporting the economy. Well, Richard, Richard, it, wait, are you talking around 2008 now or? 2008, uh, right. Yeah. And so this combination of trillions of dollars of government borrowing and spending and trillions of dollars of money creation by the Fed to finance the government spending, they reflated the bubble. The, the bubble didn't implode. It just got bigger. Thank you, and, Jesus. <laughs> and then it's been, it's been an exact replay of that again in 2020 and 2021. For instance, in the last two years, 2020 and 21, because of COVID, um, the economy started to collapse again. And in those two years, the government has borrowed $6.3 trillion, increasing government debt by 27% in two years. And the Fed has created $4.6 trillion to finance that government debt. In other words, by creating this money, the government's financed 73% of all the money that the government has borrowed, the Fed has. And so that's allowed the government to borrow $6.3 trillion, and interest rates didn't go up, they went down. Interest rates are still extremely low. So this has created a big boom in asset prices. Stock markets went to record highs. Property prices went to record highs. Uh, all kinds of wild asset classes went to record highs. So they, they kept the economy from collapsing again in the same way this time as they did in 2008. So the reason that Richard Duncan is our friend in 2008 when the subprime market collapsed, all of these guys who were flipping houses and all that, they got hammered. They got hammered. Now, the good news was because we knew Richard, he says, hey, they're going to do it again. So while everybody was losing money and housing prices were dropping, Ken McElroy, Kim and I borrowed $300 million because they were giving away money again. They were saying, hey, please borrow this money. So Ken, Kim and I borrowed $300 million in 2008 and we bought leveraged up. We bought so much real estate as all these losers and flippers and real estate agents were crying the blues. We were getting rich. And then on September 17th, 2019, the repo market blew up. And I went, here we go again, because what happened in just before 2008, the repo market blew up there again. So that's why I'm saying to everybody, Richard Duncan is a guy you want to listen to. And he's got his new book out here, this book, The Money Revolution. I can't wait to read it. But Richard also has a service called Macro Watch. So rather than you know listening to Jim Cramer on CNBC, I listen to Richard Duncan and understand what's going on in the global money supply because this next crash is going to be even bigger. And that's what Richard is going to be talking about. Am I correct, Richard? Uh, that's well, we're 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 at a, a turning point now, it looks like, because the monetary policy is moving from being ultra loose to becoming ultra potentially tight. ultra tight. Yeah. So so, Richard, the consequence of this six point three trillion dollars that they made up and the asset bubbles all over in the stock market, the property market. What are, <laughs> what's the What is the consequence of all this? Where is this leading us? Well, it depends on what the government does next, because sadly, all of the credit that's been created in recent decades, the, the economy has become addicted to credit growth. If, if credit doesn't grow by at least 2% a year adjusted for inflation, 
the U.S. goes into recession. So we have become addicted to credit growth. And the amount of total credit in the country is so large now that only government borrowing can keep it make can make it continue to grow. The private sector just doesn't have enough uh, income to service enough debt to make credit keep growing. So we've really reached the point where the future depends on how much the government borrows and how much money the Fed creates to finance that borrowing. So that's the bad news. When I hear people coming up to me, oh, the price of real estate going up and they're jumping in to buy real estate right now, I don't say anything. And the reason is, is that people are just getting into the hype. All this credit is actually debt, credit and debt, pumping into this economy, trying to prevent this crash. And if the, if interest, if, if inflation keeps going, I get richer. I am extremely happy. And I think Biden, I'm not Republican or Democrat, he intentionally wants inflation. That's why he shut down the XL pipeline. That's why he stopped drilling to get oil prices up. When oil prices go up, you have know, all these truckers in Ottawa screaming. They can't get food to the table and all this. Prices of food go up. Inflation keeps going up. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, inflation makes the rich extremely rich. The middle class will pay higher taxes and the poor will get poor because they're the ones who can't afford the $25 Wagyu steak that my friends are selling. So that's why it's one of the biggest critical turning points. And that's why I don't know how many years ago when I walked past Rich's book and Borders and it says a dollar crisis, if you understand what's going on, the problem is the U.S. dollar. Because in 1944, it stopped being money. It stopped, you know, it just became the reserve currency of the world. And then 71, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. And so when Kim and I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad 25 years ago today, we said savers or losers, your house is not an asset. I agree 100% with Richard. We're being set up right now. One of the biggest changes in world history. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, one million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, 
here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.